where this business mindset come from? Mm -hmm. That's actually a great question because uh, as I was saying before, when my, pre my friend previously hired me for the first time to do Shopify work, he said to me that actually I should learn something about business. You should have business skills because that's important because of A, B, and C. And I was like, what the hell do you mean by business skills? How do you get good at business? Like, do you read a book? Like, do you start like playing with Google Analytics? What, what is it about, you know? And in a whole chart, the, ish, the online store was like a very small thing. So this was like really opened my horizons to understand that e-commerce, commerce, retail, all of these is much bigger than just having a nice online store. Welcome guys with to the cool third episode of Yala, Let's Code Podcast, a podcast where I interview software engineers to share their entrepreneurial journey. So in this episode, we have another guest from the Shopify space, David. He was a Shopify developer back then, and currently he is a Shopify agency owner. And in this episode, we will share their story and the lesson that we can learn from their experience. So let's get started by giving a quick introduction about David. So let's go. Okay, thank you, mate. Uh, my name is David. I'm the founder of Nobles Agency. We've been in the game for seven years. We were speaking about it before we start recording. And yeah, I started with the coding side of things and eventually I left it for somebody better than me, let's say, and I'm running most of the business. Okay, sounds good. So after the quick introduction about David, I would like to know how and when did you get started in web development? Sure, so at the time, it was eight years ago, more or less, I was working at some auditing company doing finances stuff. And I had a colleague who was running, a friend who was running a digital agency. And he said to me, okay, I have this store. They are selling tobacco products, which I don't find like ethical or whatever. But if you want, you can do it. And it was the first time that I set up a Shopify store. And I had to, for the first time, do some technical work, you know, HTML, CSS, understanding XML files, etc. So that was like my first, like dipping into the waters. I got kind of hooked. So I started doing the typical uh self-learning journey, you know, free code camp and, and so on, just understanding the basics. And uh, I think six months to one year later, the guy actually hired me to start running the e-commerce division in his company that he was starting, his agency, and he selected Shopify as the way to go. And it was very much a flat structure type of company, which meant that you didn't have much of a mentoring you were just thrown into the water. So basically, I started getting the leads from clients, understanding what they need, and just basically cracking at it, you know, which meant like uh, what normally you were doing 30 minutes, one hour, I would just take like the full day just so I could learn it at the same time. And uh, when something was out of like above my pay grade, I would just go to the Shopify support, which at the time had a bunch of engineers working there directly. And I was just like getting a major technical education from the Shopify engineers directly, which was awesome. That's good. So back then it was in the Shopify support was a lot of engineer to help you fix your technical Correct. problem, which is really good. Uh, in which year we are talking about in 2000? This was, so we are 2023, so it was 2015, 16. Yeah. Okay. That's good. And uh, how was your experience building Shopify store back then in 2016? I think there was not a lot of documentation back then. Yeah, it was, it was, compared... how can I say it? It, it? it was not as evolved as it was now, you know, of course, you know, it kept, it kept yeah, getting sure. better and better. But at the time it was kind of good for me because it was not so hard to get started in the sense you were not so like intimidated by it, you know, like. Come on, you didn't have a good connection even with GitHub. So you could actually do yeah. your work without understanding Git flow and so on, which right now, nowadays sounds absolutely ridiculous and preposterous, right? But yeah. as a beginner, knowing that I can just go to the code editor, understand very clearly, very quickly, 
the, sec, the, the schema and the CSS and I can, I can play with jQuery and so on, you know. It was like very good for beginners to be able to do like a good job even without having like a very like uh, deep education on it. Uh, and what the documentation couldn't give us, the support team would like uh, complement with. So the community was always strong in terms of the mindset. So you could find the answers if you looked for them hard enough, you know. Uh, but of course, nowadays it's a completely different thing. You know, when we get new developers, uh, if they are like mid level, not completely juniors, but like mid level, within one or two months, they are like most, mostly productive most of their day because you have the tools, you have the training, you have documentation. It's much, much easier to like uh, be a proper developer on Shopify. Yeah, makes sense. And I would like to ask you more about. Did you mention it's like when you just first start in, in web development, you start with Shopify directly. So you learn Shopify yeah, along the way with web development stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Of course I had like my stupid personal projects, you know, that you do when you are practicing and learning, but those things just like get, I don't know, buried in some old cold pens, you know, and you never go into it again. And uh, of course, my first personal website, I tried to code it from scratch, you know, and like for my two or three years, it was just like no CMS, just everything like coded uh, my HTML file in my, in, my, in my laptop directly to Netlify and so on. So I had all like these smaller projects that I, I, I've done, but uh, the big, like, uh, I would say that 80% of the work that I did in, in the beginning of my developer journey was definitely on Shopify, you know, like the biggest challenge was once that I really needed to do some like bigger sale. And I had a client asking to do like design coding, like from Photoshop to Shopify. And it was like, basically I, I had no confidence at all that I could do it, but I said, yes, let's go. And, uh, it was very good because I basically spent the next two weeks day and night coding and bothering others, more senior developers at the agency to get the thing up and running. And it was like, really, I think it's good because if you have a project that pushes you and you actually have like a deadline to commit to it, it really accelerates the growth that you can have, you know, it really forces you to learn things that normally you just learn, like if you can sometime, you know, but there I really had to understand like how gradients work, how the backgrounds work, the responsibility side, you know, and all these things that make like the front end work in reality. Makes sense. So what was the, the next step after getting high in this uh, Shopify agency? Is it, did you get like a, yeah. get into a, like a freelancer or what was the next step for that? Yeah. Like two years after being at this agency, uh, I've realized that I've grew that part of the business of Shopify to become almost bigger than the agency itself. And I spoke with the founder, the owner, which is my friend. And I said, I want to buy from you this department and uh, make it my own agency. He agreed. We negotiated some nice deal and I became, and I found a sound food agency basically. Uh, at that time I was trying to keep educating myself so that I could be both a founder from a business perspective and also the technical guy. And uh, I was working like that for like one year, one year and a half, two years. And then I was in some Shopify event. I think it was Shopify Pursuit in Amsterdam, where I was inspired by the fact that all successful Shopify agencies that I was seeing had this binary duo, you know, the business person and the technical person. And I saw that I saw at that moment that I'm always more successful in the business side and it comes more natural to me and I'm lacking that like uh, right side of the brain, you know, in, in, in our company. So that's when I started like looking for potential opportunities. And when I saw a developer that was working with us and had like a lot of potential and a lot of seniority, I started grooming him to become our future CTO and he's still working with us today. And from that moment on, I slowly started like leaving the command line behind me. Okay. And how was the experience leaving the command line behind you? 
is, is it, it was hard or not? Uh, I guess, like, how can I say? I think uh, it was not hard because, because the reality is, like, I don't know, this guy that he, his name is, he's also Portuguese, by coincidence. Like, he's, he was so many light years ahead of me in terms of like his knowledge, his experience, uh, that I was just like, okay, I can never be as good as he is. So why keep on like trying to make it work and to make and become the CTO that I will never be instead of like just be the best, the best CEO, the best business development guy that I can be. So based on that, it happened also very slowly, like over the period of one or two years that I started doing less and less execution on the projects and more of the managing and the sales and marketing. And also, even if I was not coding stuff, I was still reading a lot of documentation all the time, you know, because I, I was speaking with the clients, they were telling me like what they need, what they don't need. And I didn't need to go ask a developer if we can do it or not. I could just read the documentation, figure out the architecture of a potential app to solve a solution and so on. Like I understand it thoroughly, you know, so I still was very much involved in the technical side. I was just not coding. And I think two years yeah. later, suddenly I, I said to myself, oh, damn, it's been six months that I haven't coded or it's been one year that I haven't coded. Oh, cool. Okay. I'm fine with that. I actually don't mind, you know, as long as I'm involved in the process of like thinking how to build something cool. I, I then like, I'm happy to let somebody else do the coding. Yeah, it makes sense. So we are like a more in a business and technical person in the same. It's like um, having both skills. So you can lead like a discovery call with the client to, and also to check if the projects that the client want is technically doable or not. So that's good. I would like to know more about how many employees you right, have right. when you just first started this uh, agency, like a sounds good agency at first. Sure. Sure. So the first year and a half, two years, we were mostly working as like a group of freelancer friends. So we didn't have the proper structure and, uh, but we were like, like supporting each other and I was helping different freelancers getting business through our brand, etc. And one year and a half, two years in, I realized that I need to scale the company because even if we are doing a lot of money and growing fast, I'm basically working nonstop, you know, it's so hard for me to take holidays. It's so hard for me to like spend time with family, etc. So that's the moment that I realized, okay, I need to build a proper company, uh, have a proper structure. So we started hiring. We started building a team, having a proper hierarchy and so on. And even though that was harder in the beginning, it allowed us to get to a moment where we could actually like uh, function as a company and I could like have some minimum work-life balance, even if not perfect, of course. Uh, so at the beginning, as I was saying, we were like maybe two to four people and uh, we slowly grew into the 15 people we are today. So I would like to ask you how many employees you have when you just start in the Sounds Good agency, just to give people insight about behind the scene of starting a Shopify agency. Sure. In the beginning, we were like a group of freelancers, you know, we were just like uh, cooperating, like each person was invoicing their own clients and the company was getting some like, uh, commission from it and we were basically like trying to support each other on our journey uh one year and a half into this type of cooperation i realized this is not scalable this is not like uh, self-sustainable because you basically are working all the time anytime a client needs anything it's the same group of one four people that need to handle it uh it was very demanding so we then start to properly build a company so first two years we were like two to four people Slowly, we grew it into a team of five by the year third, where we already had, for example, somebody for doing the back office, administrative stuff, and so on. And uh, eventually, we grew to where we are today, which is like 15 people, from which we have like a, a division of like uh, administration, 
uh, project manager, managers. We have like people like more on the business side, people more on developer side. We have front end developers, back end developers. So it's a much more diverse group at the moment. And recently we got uh, acquired. We merged with an even bigger company. So basically we jumped from 15 people to now being a group of like 80 people. People. That's good. So congratulations on the new acquisition. And I would like to know more. Uh, so uh, is the people are full-time employee or like a still the same, like a freelancer stuff or like a full-time employee? Yeah. Yeah. We have, uh, these 15 people are okay. full-time employees. We have like other, other freelancers that sometimes we partner with, or we have even agencies that we partner or we recommend some leads that don't uh, turn out to be qualified for us. So we still have this extra uh, capacities if needed, but the core team mm, is around 15 people. Can you walk us through, like uh, talk a, a bit more about the acquisition if you are comfortable talking about this acquisition? Sure, 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 no problem at all. Basically, uh, I don't know, maybe half a year ago, we met with the uh, the founder and the other guy, the CEO of an agency in our local market in Czech Republic, which is basically 10 times bigger than us. They are like number one e-commerce agency for the top notch custom made stores using their own platform. And uh, they were noticing that there is a hunger for SaaS based e-commerce solutions. And they saw Shopify as the best. And they want to start doing that as well. So they can reach also the mid-level market and not just like the biggest companies in the country. Of course, if they would do it by themselves, it would take them a long time, maybe three years just to get to a level of know-how that we have right now. We randomly in some e-commerce event met, had a coffee, realized that both of us like have similar values, similar like visions. And just we start, just start discussing how would, would it be if we had like a very, very close partnership or if we'd actually like would incorporate each other together. And after five months, we actually signed up all the papers, which means that basically within two months, three months, we knew we want to do it. And then it was just paperwork. And that's awesome because it's a huge win-win for both of us. From one side, they get access to these like seven years of know-how we've been building and experience and portfolio that we've been building as well. Uh, and from our side, we have a bigger company behind us with similar culture and values, which can allow us to grow even faster, you know? So it's very, very positive. We are very, very happy about it. Uh, what it changed in terms of structure, it was that right now we, the Sounds Good Agency company is owned by the group that purchased us and uh, the previous owners of the Sounds Good Agency, including me, we became shareholders on the major group which is cool because now we have like a very invested interest that the whole company is successful. And that gives us opportunity to find economies of scale and better synergies between the teams, which is absolutely fascinating. And it's, it's been super interesting learning process. And it's like, uh, yeah. like I'm very happy. Sounds about good. It, that's, that's really good. So one of the things that you mentioned is the sounds good portfolio. I would like to know more about one of the most complex projects that you build on top of Shopify? Because this is a question that I usually ask to other developers who have been in the Shopify space. I would like to get your opinion about this one. Yeah. The most complex yes. project we've done on Shopify. Mm -hmm. I would have to say we have a couple of those that like are like fighting for number one, but I would have to say probably is still, I think our bigger client, biggest client. And it was the toughest one because it was the first client at that level that we've had. This is basically one of the top five electronic and furniture sellers in the country. They have over 130 uh, stores, physical stores between Czechia and Slovakia. So they are like highly like corporate and at the same time, they have very complex needs. It was not just about designing a nice theme 
and putting it out there and make it fancy. That actually was like their last priority. The most important thing was connection with SAP, uh, connection with the uh, SAP, connection with all their like other internal systems, making sure that all the process would work properly, how the, like, the legal side of how the accounting would be perfectly made because at that level of companies, if they go through some audit and there is a small mistake in the way the discount is processed, they are in big trouble. And just the onboarding of the client, the selling process, getting them to buy into the Shopify concept was like a huge challenge. And then the execution itself, like it was the first project we've done. And instead of taking three to six months, took us like one year and a half to deploy all the stores. They had like three stores. We deployed the first one as MVP very fast in three months. The second store took us like another nine months and the final store another three months on top of it. You know, so it was like, it was very phased, very complex. We did co-development. We also some of their, of their uh, developers as well. You know, so we had to establish a proper Git flow so we could review each other's code and make sure like everything was at like top notch level and they would accept our code quality. Uh, and we've built so much custom stuff, so much custom stuff. Like, uh, for example, we have on the product pages, a click and collect functionality, which means that they basically on the product page without going to the checkout, they can select, I want to reserve this on a store. And, uh, we know how much of this product per store is, and they can open a map, select the place and a form connects with SAP with SAP. So the person in the store uh, gets a notification to call the client and confirm they have the product, product, maybe do some upsell and so on. And for example, this was like a small Vue.js app on top of it, leveraging data from the stores that we are fitting from SAP into the product meta fields, you know, like it's just maybe 5% of the project, but yep. it's a project in itself. Makes sense. I mean? um... I would like to ask you a question about how was your experience from being a Shopify developer to having an agency and leading other developer? Yeah, it was very, like it happened so slowly that you almost didn't notice it, you know? And um, how can I say, we have our CTO, but if I would be pressed, to like uh, find a different job, for example, I could easily apply to a CTO position, you know, because even if I don't, I'm not coding, and even if I have like probably lots of technical holes that uh, uh, senior developer would be much better than me, I am right there on the mix of business and technology. So I know how the technology works and I know how it makes sense or doesn't make sense for the business. So it never felt like I became I was once building cool stuff and the other day I'm just like telling people what to do. It never felt like that because I always have been involved in these complex projects, for example, you know, like I've always been involved in the architecture of such projects and vetting it with developers, vetting it with the client. And because like, I don't know, like, how can I say, for example, last week, year, we even bought another client of that level, which was kind of complex. And I did consultation on how they should integrate SAP with Shopify without the need of bringing any senior developer with me because I already knew it. I already knew what those SAP objects, what do they mean within the Shopify APIs, you know? So you, I never felt like completely detached from the technology, which also makes it much easier for me then to sell to the client because they know that it, they, they see that I know what I'm talking about. You know, it's not like I'm just going there and selling marketing phrases. I actually know how the things work and that's awesome. So the transition was very slow and it was very um, progressive and never completely. And I the next question the will be like, what will be a typical day in a life of David? My day to day, it's quite, yeah. Yeah, it's quite uh, full, I would say, <laughs> because being like, uh, founder, owner, you always think about the business. So I don't know, like you really can be thinking about it all the time. It helps me that I have kids. So like they force me to like turn off from the business. But uh, if you think about how the day starts, I wake up, uh, 
get my kids to school and from the early morning until I get home at 6 p.m. I have either meetings, Slack, email, uh, analysis of problems, sales, marketing, leadership decisions, one-on-ones and so on. So on a regular basis, I have between five to 10 meetings per day, which could take like between 30 minutes to a hour and a half. And on each one of these meetings, we are making important decisions on how to move forward the project, uh, a, a sale, uh, a partnership, and, uh, or a, a new structure on how to run the company and how to make it more efficient, or I'm helping one of the project managers on how to grow to get to the next level and so on. So it's very much about decision making, about communicating our value with existing clients and future clients, and make sure that everybody in the company is happy. Makes sense. So it's a quite intense day with a lot of meeting. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed. I don't enjoy the meetings per se, but uh, I enjoy the the decision making side of things. You know, it's very. Very compelling. Makes your mind okay. think, you know. Sounds good. So, you mentioned a lot like the business stuff related to technology. So I got like the from where you get like the technical side, but I would like to know more about the business side. So, did you go to a business school? Like from where this business mindset come from? Mm-hmm. That's actually a great question because, uh, as I was saying before, when my my friend previously hired me for the first time to do Shopify work, he said to me that actually I should learn something about business. You should have business skills because that's important because of A, B, and C. And I was like, what the hell do you mean by business skills? How do you get good at business? Like, do you read a book? Like, do you start like playing with Google Analytics? What what is it about, you know? And... Over the time, I realized that it goes very much through experience, mainly, you know, so just going through ups and downs, success and failures in business, teach you a lot about it. And uh, what was for me maybe the accelerator, what helped me starting to understand what business is like, even before I started my own agency, was that when I was getting my training in Shopify, I've actually, with the previous agency, uh, started two brands on Shopify to know exactly what are the pain points of merchants. So I actually went through the process of like creating a brand, getting some uh, sourcing the products, listing the products on Shopify, setting up the theme, making like uh, getting deals with the, the shipping companies to make sure that I get the best deal I can, you know, like setting up the marketing, the pixels. Uh, managing the margin, forecasting, pro- like all of these things that like most Shopify experts don't even like care or know about. This was like my my introduction to what it, what it means to be a Shopify merchant, what it means to have a, a, your own online store. And uh, during this first year that I was running these experiments, like I've never we've never like made huge money of it. We probably broke even, but it was it was a huge a huge added value on like understanding business. What are the priorities of the merchants? What are the limitations of Shopify for those merchants? And uh, that was like basically the fundamental, if you want to, to call it like the business school that gave me the fundamentals on how to build on top of it. And then of course, the agency business itself taught me a lot on understanding like what do we need? Because in the beginning I wanted to give a lot and uh, I was sacrificing sustainability of the agency and uh, later on when you start speaking with bigger clients that are like i don't know three levels above you you basically are like a pokemon evolving because you are facing completely new perspectives needs and uh, challenges so you just keep building on top of that you know it's never like you did an education you read a book and now you're good at business it's really how the experiments and ex- experiences you have start building up around you. And when you realize it, you actually can see things from a very holistic perspective, uh, which gives you then the advantage that if you're speaking, for example, on a sales call and a client comes to you saying, I want A, B, and C, 
you ask three questions about their business and then suddenly you realize, okay, you don't need A, B, and C. You actually need D, E, and F. And you are not even seeing it yet. But because of the, the fact that I've been advising so many businesses for such a long time, you start having this like ability to, to see these, these um, uh, dead angles that people are not yeah, looking at so often. So you get more of this business mindset from experience and getting your head dirty in the business stuff to be able to have a business perspective on stuff. That's really exactly. good. So other question that I have for you is if you start all over from scratch, what thing that you wish that you know? Okay. I, there is really a lot of things that I would do. I would have done differently if I knew everything that I know today. I'll select two things that I think are the best. First is do more think less you know i wasted many times many months on planning thinking organizing doing strategy and i would get much better results if i would just go for it you know it took me a long time maybe two or three years to actually just start jumping into stuff and see if things work out or not and that's like super important because you can never predict every single scenario of course it's good to think about something but more than a little, it's too much. So do more, think less. Uh, so better said, don't overthink what you want to do and like uh, believe in your gut. And the second thing that I've learned very early on is that hope it's not, is not a strategy. Hope is not a strategy. Every time that I had some struggles and somebody said, okay, so what do you think is going to happen? Or how do you think you're going to solve this problem in your company? I was thinking, oh, I hope that this will turn out this way and therefore the problem will get sorted out. And I realized that I was saying this very often. I hope that this will happen or I hope we'll get a client. I hope that this will not be problematic. Hope is not a strategy, you know? Actually, you need to figure out what can you do to make sure that your hope becomes a reality. And uh, once you like uh, get into that mindset, you can find more action points that you can control and you can also more easily ignore the things that you cannot. Makes sense. It's really good. And it's really good point, especially the overthinking stuff. Because many people suffer from that, from overthinking and not taking action on the right time. And it's really po really good point to mention. Also, other thing like uh, talking about things that you wish that you learn sooner. What are the hard lessons that you learn in your seven years career in the Shopify space? So it's a similar question, but it's a different... Uh... The hard lessons I've learned. Okay, a couple that I think from top of my head. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that I've learned that... Um, I, there was a project that I learned a lot from. Uh, I cannot say who it is because we had NDA and you were cooperating with different Shopify agency. Uh, so there is this very big, very famous Shopify agency working for a big project. And uh, the person responsible for this project, not the agency, the client, reached out to us because they want to move faster. We were getting to, into a deadline and they couldn't make it in time with the big ass company that they were doing it. And uh, in this project, I realized two things that for me were quite new. First is that the e-commerce side of the business for the merchants doesn't always is the most important, but actually it can be a small P in the overall diagram of the business. Because these guys showed me their overall like, business plan and their like uh, the architecture of all the system that are combined. And in a whole chart, the, ish, the online store was like a very small thing. So this was like really opened my horizons to understand that e-commerce, commerce, retail, all of this is much bigger than just having an, a nice online store with a cool theme on it. You know, it's much more complex. And um, I think if I would understand this earlier, I would have capitalized a bit much better. And I would have also invested much earlier on having great backend uh, developers uh, working with us. 
And the, the second thing that I also learned in this project is that even though the Shopify community, the partners community and the e-commerce world in general is very open, very friendly, very nice, when it, when it goes to like getting it or losing a client, people can be ruthless, you know? So I lost a bit of my naivety during that project because that agency kind of like uh, sabotaged us to make it look like we were doing bad work for the client. And uh, it was like really not a pleasant experience. And it broke like my imaginations or, or the glass of my imaginations of how this company and the top people would behave in the world. And I realized that like when it comes to business, people can be ruthless as well. Yeah. Makes sense. Also, I would like to know, for example, for, let's say for an inspired Shopify developer that would like to get in this space and to get some, their first client as a freelancer, as a solo freelancer or as a agency owner. Okay. So there are two ways of going about it. Uh, let's assume the first way you are a very much a beginner in terms of know-how and of uh, technical cap capabilities. You're going to have a lower price point entry. So what you should do is try to get in front of as many people as possible that need your help and uh, get to solve something for them. So I, what I would do, I would go into as many Facebook groups that I can, LinkedIn groups, Discord, Slack communities, everywhere that I can, where people are, where people are asking their questions. And I'll just be there answering all the questions that I can. Shopify also has its own community. I'll just try to be as helpful as I can, you know, because if I'm doing that for a week full time, I'm guaranteed that people will follow up with me with more answers, more questions. I'm going to be able to charge them for my know-how. So that's the easy way if you are like just getting started and you have time to put into it and you can slowly get people to pay you for your services. You know, you can simply like start with a lower rate than the average person, you know, or just like charge them like one time fee for whatever you need to, to do for them and keep it simple, keep it cheap. If you have no reviews or no social like uh, verification of your services, maybe accept the fact you get paid just after it's done. Uh, once you start having some credibility, you can start uh, enforcing the 50% before, 50% after. Now, if you are very much confident of what you can do and you can like actually solve the issues of bigger merchants, you can take a more long-term route, which will end up to be more profitable and more interesting, which is, uh, I think, Jonas, you had him on your first uh, on your first uh, episode, he was great on this, you know, basically started creating content directly for the people that want to buy from you. And uh, so we are going to build an uh, audience that is going to be able to buy from you, but that can take like many more months than if you just like go directly to where the people are asking your questions. For the people who would like to know more about you, like I personally or the company sounds good, where do you recommend them to go? At this point, anywhere they want. I am on LinkedIn, of course, and on Twitter. I have my weekly newsletter on Substack. I have my monthly newsletter on LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok. Now I'm actually everywhere. So if you just type in David Simoes, sounds good agency, you are going to get information about me. Definitely follow on Twitter or connect on LinkedIn, write me, send me an email to david at soundsgood.agency and uh, I'll be very happy to help with anything you may like to know, you know, being a merchant or even being a beginning Shopify developer or if you're looking for a gig, for a job, I'm happy to connect and discuss anything you like. That's good. So all the link will be in the show notes for this podcast episode. Can you just give us more detail about the, the weekly and the monthly newsletter that you mentioned for people who are curious about? Sure. So I have two newsletter, newsletters. The weekly one 
the weekly newsletter that I do is basically a curated list of five news or insights regarding business and technology within the e-commerce for the last week. So every Friday, if you sign up, you get on your inbox the five biggest news. I think like now at the moment of recording, I'm thinking that the number one will be how Shopify crashed a couple of days or yesterday or two days ago. <laughs> and I'm going to blame it all on Taylor Swift, of course. <laughs> so that's like the weekly newsletter. And uh, on the monthly newsletter, I actually make a larger, like uh, deeper analysis of some specific issue or uh, uh, I do a, a longer type of content type of article where I address a specific thing that is relevant at the time or that I faced, you know, for example, this month I put out on my newsletter, monthly newsletter, how exactly was this acquisition process for me as a founder the week before I did a in-depth analysis or discussion about SEO on Shopify based on like some discussions that I've had with a, a SEO specialist uh, in the, in that given period about the client migrating to Shopify and all of their concerns regarding SEO. So I'll just take a specific topic that has been bothering me, that I've been speaking about or thinking about, and I try to make it like a more uh, educational content there. And that's basically what you can expect from those newsletters. So I think we come up to the final uh, section. So I would like to thank you for accepting my invitation, for sharing in your story and your experience working in the Shopify space as a developer and after that as a Shopify agency owner. And thank you so much for sharing all the information that you have in this call. And what the guest does you would like to recommend you to have next in this podcast? Whoa, okay. So I have uh, two people that I'd love to hear and coming to a beginning starting e-commerce podcast. That's uh, people from EtherCycle, either Paul Ruda or Kurt Elster, because I think they would be awesome guests and they would actually give you a bump as well in terms of viewership. So that would be awesome. And eventually Kelly Vogue. I think she is not doing the agency business owner and developer anymore, but I'd love also to, for her to like uh, bring in some closure there and tell a bit more like how her journey drove her to where she is right now. That's really good because Kelly Vogue, I have it in my guest list. So I think I will be in contact with the Kali next to be able to have it in the podcast. Awesome. So thank you for this, uh, like sharing this uh, guest list. Thank you so much. And um, 